Welcome to Unthinkable, I'm Jay Kunzo, and it's time for another Slingshot, short stories of creative side projects that led somewhere unexpected. What actually happens when people follow their intuition and turn it into action? That's what we're exploring today. What I found is probably one of the most effective ways of accomplishing a goal. And it's not simply writing it down and putting, tacking it up in front of your computer. It's actually saying it out loud to another human being. This is Scott Monty. He's a well-known marketing consultant and speaker who advises some of the most innovative brands in the world. He's also the creator of one of the marketing industry's most read newsletters, The Full Monty. But the reason Scott says he's an oxymoron has to do with his side project. One of my hobbies since I was about 15 years old was Sherlock Holmes. So I was thinking as, as 2005 rolled along, uh, why don't I experiment a little bit online? So I created what was then known as the Baker Street blog. So he decided to use the project as a sort of laboratory. I really didn't have a professional outlet to try out this new social media stuff that I was hearing about. I knew that that could have a lot more impact than my own kind of semi-professional blog because the appeal was to a kind of more of a mainstream audience. One of the biggest trends that he started exploring was podcasting. I mean, if I had that voice, I'd podcast too. From there, the success of this project continued like most successful side projects go, in a way you just can't predict. Uh, after 18 episodes, we, uh, we pod faded. We pod faded for about a year and a half because we just didn't have the bandwidth. And, and during that time, that's when I got hired by Ford and I moved out to Michigan. So, you know, there was a lot of uh, professional uh, upheaval and, and concentration that I didn't have time to dedicate to this hobby. So when, when we reinvigorated it, um, we brought the two brands together, uh, not only for the sake of um, – ease of administration, like managing one site, but because it made sense to tie the brands together and have a, you know, a regularly updating news and information site that, oh, by the way, also had an audio program to it. Was there a moment where you realized that, you know, hey, this might be something that we now owe to our audience to continue doing. It's something more meaningful, not just to us and a small group of people, but this, this could be something greater. Was there a singular moment that you look back on and kind of see that as an inflection point? There were, there were a couple. There was one for the website itself. We wrote an update that said Nicholas Rowe, who uh, had played uh, Sherlock Holmes in the 1985 film Young Sherlock Holmes. We said Nicholas Rowe to reprise his role in updated Sherlock Holmes movie. It was a project that was greenlit, but there were no actors, there was no director associated with it at all. Uh, so we postulated that Nicholas Rowe, now being an adult, would actually be good for the role. And it, it, it got picked up by a Hollywood uh, website. Well, it was an April Fool's joke. Scott is a guy who straddles two worlds. The classics, like Sherlock Holmes, and the cutting edge technology and communication trends of the day. I make sure that I constantly think back to where we came from because there are such great lessons from amazing thinkers that have come before us, right? And I think if we spend time understanding what the past masters have already laid out for us, that most of the time it relates to human nature. It relates to the way people think and feel and react and uh, what motivates them, all the things that good marketers should really understand. One of Scott's recent guests, a Sherlock expert and member of the Baker Street Irregulars from Sweden, asked if he could write a story for their site, and it went everywhere. He got calls by major news organizations to do interviews. It was on the front page of Reddit. I think we got about 200,000 uh, visitors in a single week, which, you know, normally we get maybe... I don't know, 10 to 15,000. So we just saw this explosion. To harness the growth, Scott knew he had to expand. And he did so in a very Sherlockian way. Right, so I was at one of our January gatherings in New York, and I said to this elderly uh, statesman in, in the hobby who does a monthly newsletter, I said, Peter, I want to I wanna grow I Hear of Sherlock Everywhere. 
where I've got a stable of writers uh, and kind of have beat reporters, and uh, I, I want them to handle a lot of stuff. And you know, I can't pay them obviously, but I'll, I'll send them Amazon gift cards or whatever because everybody likes books. And uh, I, I want to grow this, so it's a, you know, it's it's I hear of Sherlock everywhere, right? And if it is indeed everywhere, I can't be everywhere. And even Sherlock Holmes knew that. In the end, we all do work that's a reflection of ourselves. These are acts of self-discovery. They let you uncover parts you didn't know were even there. When you create stuff for a living, you can't remove yourself from a given project. It's literally impossible. It is you. The reason you do work, the reason you do good work, is you. So the more we possess self-awareness and actually lean into that, the better our work can get. And that's unthinkable. Unthinkable.